you've not been using the real power of voice flow, custom functions. Today, we're going to be jumping into how to build a custom function using some very basic JavaScript and querying the OpenAI Vision API to get some external data and process it. By the end of this video, you'll know what custom functions are and how to build one yourself. And as a bonus, you'll be able to use the custom function that we built for the OpenAI Vision API to query the Vision API yourself and use its full processing power to make truly jaw-dropping functionality for your clients. Hi there. My name is Michael Guimarães, and I'm a voice flow community expert, and you may also know me from our platform, Flowbridge. So let me show you what we're going to be doing. We're going to be helping our accountants not to have to go manually and classify receipts and just kind of automate that entire process and put it into Airtable so that we can process it later through our own custom front end. Uh, so this is what that build looked like. It's pretty simple. Uh, we're going to go every, over every part of this, but let me show you kind of what this looks like in real life. So I've got my phone here. I'm going to send over a message and say, hey, as you can see, I've already been testing it slightly. So we're going to get a response. There we go. Let's now take a picture just through WhatsApp of a receipt. Well, that's going to now go into WhatsApp, all made possible through Flowbridge. So you can learn more if you click on the card on the top right of your screen. And as you see, it's converted it all into JSON. And we've sent that over to Airtables. And as you can see, all that information from the receipt is now into Airtables. And the extra thing we did here is we've added this category field which for our accountant is going to be make it very easy to visualize and understand which of these individual items in the receipt is actually a business expense or a learning budget or something like that, and which are personal expenses that the user made on each individual item of the receipt. So super powerful. Let's jump into this and see how we can do this in just four simple steps. Step one, we're going to be creating a new project on VoiceFlow. Step two, we'll be making the custom function for the Vision API and add these categories that it can select from. Step three is to make the function to query it off to Airtables and process the information from the Vision API. And step four, watch the magic happen. So I'm starting from a completely blank project here. First of all, let's go over to the function section. If we click on contents and then go to functions, I've already imported the OpenAI Vision API by Flowbridge, which again, you can find in the description here and then click this import button to actually import. I've made a couple of changes. So first of all, we've removed the query parameter here, which is a input variable. These input variables are shown in the designer when you put the custom function step into your designer itself. So we've removed that because we want to query it from the code itself. Next part is the actual OpenAI query API. You can pause if you want to read the entire thing. The important parts to this are the actual categories that I want the AI system to uh, be able to use when actually setting these categories for each individual item. And I've also set this example JSON, how I want the structure to look like when it's coming back from the OpenAI Vision API. I've also ensured in the prompt that I don't want it to return anything else except the JSON structure, no text and also no code block syntax, just the JSON itself. So let's go ahead and go over the payload. This is the payload that we're sending over to the Vision API. You can check the Vision API documentation to understand the structure exactly. So in this case, we want the query itself to be in there and we want the image URL to be sent over to the Vision API for processing. We're making a post request. Uh, we've included some headers, which include the OpenAI token that we are getting from these input variables itself. Uh, once we have that config set up, we can actually do the request itself. Uh, then we want to check if the response is okay. If everything goes right, it's going to go into this last return function, which is going to actually be a success path rather than the error path, which we can see up here. We want to set that content that we're getting back from the Vision API, and we're outputting that into output vars. Uh, and then we're also setting a debug trace to make sure that the response is correct from our testing. And then we're sending the actual entire response body, as well as a vision message debug trace so that we can ensure that everything is going well and see what's going on exactly. So now that we have the first function ready, let's put it into the designer and see what happens. We're going to start off by uh, putting in this block right over here. And we're going to also add a capture step so that we have that information. Uh, let's map this to a different variable. Let's call it image URL. There we go. And then let's hook the startup into here. So it's going to start by sending this message and then we're going to listen for the actual URL. The next step is adding a the custom function that we just built. So if we go over to the dev section, click function and then select the actual function that we just made. You can see that here are the input variables that I spoke about in the beginning of that code. We'll add some information here. And then this is the response that we're getting from the Vision API and what we want to do with that. We can map it to a variable and then process that further along in the build. There we go. 
and we can add the image URL and we're going to map the image URL that we just made from the variables uh, into this image URL in the function. Now as the output, let's map that as a new variable that we're going to create vision API response so that we can use that later on in the build itself. Now, just for debugging purposes so that we can understand what's going on and continue on in our build, let's go with the success block and let's output what the Vision API is actually returning to us. So we can just use that through this new variable that we just made. And then if it's something goes wrong, let's just make a little nice oops text. So let's try this out. Let's see what happens. If we click on the run, we're going to be able to test this out. And there we go. We're getting a response. Now, rather than doing it through WhatsApp, just for debugging purposes, let's put in the URL itself to the image and then send that over. Now, the expectation is, is that we're going to get a JSON response from the Vision API. Great. So it's returning us a zero. We did something wrong here. So let's debug this a little bit further. We can see that the OpenAI Vision API is actually returning the information we want. So most likely we forgot to do something somewhere. Let's open up this Vision API step and we can see right here that we did not correctly map over the outputs. So if we go ahead and do that now with this vision API response one, we should now actually get a response. There we go. The response from the vision API. So we've built the function, the first one, we're going to build another one as well. And we've learned a little bit of debugging along the way. So let's go ahead and go to the next part, which is actually processing that information and then sending it over into air tables. So let's go ahead and create that function. Now, <clears throat> if we go over to the content area again, and then go to functions, let's create a new function from scratch this time. Let's call it the air tables processing function. Let's remove the S create function. <clears throat> and then we get this default structured layout with the input variables that we can get from the input variables over here and a return trace with some information. We're not going to be using that, but we are going to be using the function itself. So let's first start by going and creating a new input variable that we're going to need, which is going to be the output from the vision API. We'll call that expense JSON. There we go. Let's create that here as well so that we can actually use it into the code. And then from here, we're going to want to get the input there's. So from args.input variables, input variables is where we get all these input variables from. And then we're going to want to get the specific one that we need, which is the expense JSON one. So now that we have that, let's make the structure and add some of the variables that we'll need to actually query air tables. In this case, we're going to have a base ID and a table ID, which we're going to need to use for the air tables API call itself inside of the URL. We're going to need the base ID there and the table ID right next to it. From that point on, we're going to actually want to convert the JSON string that we're getting from the Vision API into an actual JavaScript object. So let's do that right here using JSON parse on the expense JSON, which is that string we're getting from Vision API. And then we're going to get that as an object into this expense items array variable. So the next part to this, we're getting this structure from the Vision API, but we actually need to map that structure into what Airtable wants from us. So let's go ahead and do that part next. And we're going to add a new variable that we're going to call uh, expense body. And it's going to get this expense items array, go over the items within it, and then map each individual item into a new structure. So we have what we what Airtable wants from us. Uh, you can read about that in the documentation on Airtables. If they want an array uh, that go, has a fuels object, and then within that object, they have item, price, currency, purchase, location, category. We have these because that's what we named our columns. If you have different columns, you'd want to map it out to the column names that you gave it. So that's what Airtable wants from us. But what we're getting from the Vision API is a little bit different. We're getting, for example, this expense lower dash item and price lower dash item. So what we're saying here is go over each individual item that we're getting from that JSON object from the Vision API. And then we're going to map them into what the array structure needs to be for the Airtables API. So that's what we're doing here. And it's going to output that into this expense body variable. The next part to this is going to be to create the config for the fetch statement. You can do that within the fetch method itself as well. But just to keep the things a little bit structured, this makes it a little bit easier. And from this config, we're going to want to have a post request sent to Airtables. We're going to add the headers for the content type and the authorization, which is going to be our API token, which should be bearer and then space the API token itself. 
Next, we have the body, which is going to be the information that we want to send over to Airtables. It expects to be a string. So we're going to JSON stringify the data so that it converts from a JavaScript object into a JSON string. What the Airtable API expects from us is that we have this main wrapper called records. And then within records, we're going to have all of the arrays of each individual record that we want to add, which is going to be this mapping that we're doing over here. So we've got this part done. Let's start sending this data over to the actual API of Airtable. So first of all, let's remove this part that we don't need anymore. And let's wrap this entire thing into a try catch statement. We're going to do that just for cleaning code purposes. So we're going to add this try at the end of the get a catch, which is going to be the error itself. And if it goes into an error, so if we if we throw an exception at any point within this try statement, we're going to add a return of the path error and with a trace of debug, which sends us a little bit of information of what's going on exactly based on the error that we're throwing. This is going to throw an error in and of itself because we don't actually have an error path, even though we're stating it here. So we're going to want to add that right here into the path sections on the right side. Let's make that error. Perfect. So we have that path that now exists within a function. Let's continue on and put things into the try area. So first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to send this information over to the Airtables API. <clears throat> so we've got this fetch statement that we're making, and we're going to wait for the response, and that's going to map into this response variable. It works a little bit differently than how it works with the normal JavaScript fetch. You can view more information on that through the voice flow documentation though it's almost the exact same thing. So it's not a very big change. So next part is let's check if we're actually getting a correct response. So if the HTTP status code is going to uh, be an okay, if not, it's going to throw this error, which is going to go into this catch statement. And the message that we want in there is this HTTP error with the status that we're getting from it. So it's going to map into the catch statements, return the error path, and then send us some debug information to continue on debugging what's going on. So <clears throat> once we've done that, let's grab the fetch response, which is going to be this piece of code right here. We're mapping the response.json, which is going to convert the string into an object into this response body variable that we're creating. Once we've got that, let's just make sure that the response body actually contains information. So we're checking if the response body has any information or if it's not an object. If it, if it doesn't have information or if it's not an object, it's going to throw this error saying that we got an incorrect response from the API. So that's the last piece of validation that we want to do here. Now let's actually create the success path. So in the case that everything went correctly, we've got an OK response from the Airtables API. We can now ensure that it goes into the success path and then do whatever we want from this within the designer itself. We do need to create that path itself. So let's go ahead and add this path on the right side, success. And that should be it. We now know that everything should be working. So now that we have it working, let's just optimize it a little bit so that we can reuse this custom function for all of the other projects that we want to use this in. So rather than hard coding these base IDs and table IDs inside of the code itself, let's create an input variable so that we can just do that from the designer. So let's first start to create this base ID, we're going to create a table ID, and then we're going to create an API token. Perfect. Now that we have that into the input variables on the right, we're going to want to add that into the code itself as well. So let's go ahead and do API token, table ID, and base ID. Now that we have these IDs, table ID, and base ID variables set up here, we can just remove this hard-coded part because we already have those variables within our code. That's going to map into this URL. That's perfect. And then we want to replace the API token that we've hard coded in here and then add that in as the API token right there. Perfect. So we have the actual input variable set. We've mapped in those input variables into the actual code. Let's test it out and see how it works. So let's go back to the designer. We have this vision API response that we're getting already. We're going to want to map that into the custom function that we just created called Airtable processing function. Perfect. So we now see that we have these input variable mappings on the right side, which is the input variables that we've created. Let's populate them with the information that we had before. So we'll put the base ID into the base ID variable. The table ID we'll put in right there. 
And then we're going to have to get the API token and we'll paste it in right there. Then we have the expense JSON, which we're getting from the Vision API response and mapping that into this Vision API response variable. So let's map that over here. Perfect. We have the two paths that we created, success and error. So let's go ahead and respond with something there, saying everything was added into error table. And then the error, let's just say something went wrong which we can then check in the debug traces that we've added. Perfect, everything's set up. Let's test it out. Let's put in the URL. Again, if you wanna get it work with WhatsApp, we can do that through Flowbridge. More information in the description below, but we're just inputting it from here. There we go. We're getting the Vision API response. We've got the actual JSON response and everything was added to Airtable. Let's check that out. And there we go. It's all into Airtables with each individual item and the category that we've queried the OpenAI Vision API to do. And there we have it, our very own 24 seven accountant that's going to be listening to WhatsApp and getting in the receipts and categorizing them. Of course, we've used the system to categorize items on a receipt and put them into an air table, but obviously this would be applicable to almost anything like Maybe you would want to count inventory for your business and query that into Airtables or any other API that you're using for your inventory management. The possibilities are truly endless here. Anyways, again, a huge thanks to Voiceflow for giving us the opportunity to make this video and showcase it to the community. Voiceflow has truly impacted our agency to make sure that we're able to make these builds rapidly and be highly productive from all senses, be it development or from building the flow itself. So truly thanks to Voiceflow for making this possible. If you want to know more, go into the Voiceflow Discord, where there's a huge community of builders giving help to each other, or check out Flowbridge, which makes it easy to connect social channels to your Voiceflow builds, or our YouTube channel where we're doing more learning specific to Voiceflow. This has been Mike, and until next time.